Color correction is a big part of filmmaking, which is usually done in the post-production phase. This can sometimes take quite a while, especially if you're trying to match the clips and make them look identical in terms of the color. Now there are a few ways to do this by matching your white balance and your tint within your camera and then matching it in, in post. But there's one tool that we can use that makes it so much easier and we do this during the production phase or while we're filming. And this is using the color correction charts. Different companies make them and you've probably seen a few YouTubers use them. MKBHD uses them as props sometimes. Gerald Undone uses his chart every now and then in his videos as well and they range from various sizes and costs. And these are color correction charts, also known as color correction passports, or color passports, or whatever you wanna call them. This is basically what they come in. Uh, sometimes they're in a little booklet like this with multiple different sections. You can also get one which is just a little card like this. So there's a decent range in price that you can get for these. Obviously this, is going to be a little bit less expensive because it's just printed on a piece of cardstock. This is quite a lot more expensive. It's made with hard plastic in a little book shape, uh, has different pages on it, and it has more color correction tabs in it. So depending on how much you want to spend, you'll probably get a little bit more accuracy with the things that are more expensive. But if you're doing something a little bit less big of a production, like a YouTube channel, or some smaller films that you don't want to have to go out and spend something like $150 just to get this. This is not a bad idea. This might be about $15 on Amazon. I'll link both of these down below if you want to check them out. This one comes with just the colors on the front and a gray card on the back. This one has multiple different colors on this side and then a white balance gray card on the back as well. So what are they for? What do you use them for? These are basically to set your colors in post. So you basically show this part on camera at one point, and then later on in the post-production phase, you'll find the frame that you're showing this, and then you'll color correct the video to each individual cell in this to make sure that the colors are all accurate to what the colors are in real life. This can also help with exposure because it has a black to white bar as well. So you can use this to check your white and your blacks in the contrast area as well. Furthermore, you can also set your white balance by putting this gray card up to the camera, zooming in just onto the gray card, and then setting your white balance to that. Some other cards also have a focus checker as well, which are little plus signs on your card where you can set it up where your face is gonna be and then focus directly to that card. So one benefit of using these cards is that it's a lot easier to get perfectly or almost perfect colors in post where sometimes it may not be as easy to if you're not in a controlled environment like this. You could just flash your card and then film as you would normally without having to worry about getting your white balance and your color set perfectly in camera at the time. Now, obviously mistakes do happen, but thankfully these will help with fixing those mistakes in post. Now, some softwares like Blackmagic Resolve have automatic tools that can detect these cards and automatically fix the colors. Others like Premiere Pro, you're gonna have to do it a little bit more manually, but thankfully there are some plugins that make this process a lot faster and sometimes even fully automatic. The MBR color correction plugin for Premiere Pro basically does exactly that. Uh, it sets the color based on whichever profile that you set for these cards. And I say that because different companies make these cards in different arrangements, putting the colors in different places. So you select your profile in the software and then it searches for that card. This cheaper card that I have here copied the design and the layout of another pre-existing card. So you don't have to worry about making your own profile. You can just Google the images of the more popular brands and then match up whichever colors are where and then find that profile in the software. So with this plugin, there are two different options. You can pay for the full price of the full version, which is 50 euros. I'm not sure what the conversion rate is for that. Or you can get the trial version, which is completely free. And, and I don't think there's a time limit for it. It just has a little bit less features. And you can get both of them off of the website that I'm gonna link in the description as well. Once you get to that website, you're gonna see some examples of how this is used and how the color correction charts work. We can also see underneath that the supported color charts that you can use as well. If we scroll down, we can see that there's the trial version and the full version. 
Here we can see that the trial version doesn't include anything like watermarks or limited duration, but it does limit the software to using only 8 bits per channel and only to non-commercial projects, whereas the full version can support up to 32 bits per channel, commercial projects, and enables the full use of the adjustment curve and export LUT features. Basically, to download the trial, you just click on download the trial version. It's going to open up a window which will automatically prompt you to download the software. Download it, and then within that download folder, you'll see a hyperlink to an HTML file that explains how to install that plugin. Follow those descriptions, and then you'll have the plugin downloaded. And then if we go to Premiere Pro, we go down to Effects under video effects, and then under color correction, we see MBR color corrector three. All right, so here I have this clip of me holding the, the little passport. All we have to do is go down and apply this effect onto the clip. And this is what the plugin looks like. So now I'm gonna go down to card type and find the card that I'm using. This is the one that it is here. We can also change the color space that we're working in, but I'm already in sRGB, so I can just leave that there. Then there's a few more color correction bits that we can work in as well, but again, I'm just gonna leave it how it is right now. Now we go down to the card location. When we click on the effect in the effect controls window, this square is gonna pop up, and this is the outline that we're going to try and find in the frame. So sometimes we can click find card and frame, sometimes it won't find it. So now we have to do it ourselves. So this corner here we can see is the white side. So I'm going to drag this to the white corner. This is the black corner, so I'm going to drag it to the black. This is the light blue or cyan. And then this here is brown. If you want to make this preview window full screen, you can hit the tilde mark or the pinata N accent. I don't know what that's called. We can make this window full screen and start changing it up here. Looks like the card is a little bit out of focus, but I don't think that should affect the plugins work. Now that we're all squared up or good enough at least, So once you have the card selected, you can click read from frame. This will take the frame that you're on and then read this card. So now if I click this button here that says global FX mute, we can see what it looks like without the color correction and with the color correction. So clearly it did quite a little bit of work here. Uh, it did desaturate my office quite a bit, but maybe that's for the better, who knows. Then at the bottom here, we can add a little bit more of a color correction on top of what it already did with the grays and exposure, and we can watch the tone curve here as well. I think I'm using the trial version right now because I can't change the tone curve, and that's pretty much as easy as it is. So with the full version, you can also save as a LUT and then use that LUT in future videos if you wanna keep the same color correction uh, work that it already did. Then you don't have to worry about doing the whole process and fixing everything later on. Uh, you just do this once and then save it and then you can apply it later on. So if you've ever seen these cards around and you've wondered what they're for, or if you've ever wondered how to make your videos or even your photos look a little bit more accurate in terms of the color, these are the tools that you want to look into. Now these color correction charts aren't only for video, you can also throw them up in a photo, take a photo of them and then use that to correct your images as well. That's a whole separate topic that I don't know as much about. You probably have to do that all in Photoshop. I don't think Lightroom has a tool that works with that, but I'm not sure about that, so don't take my word for it. But if you buy one of these charts, you pretty much have them for life. You can use them in any of your projects. You can use it to your heart's desire. So while they may seem expensive, it is a product that won't be going out of date anytime soon because these colors are already considered Correct. Now, would I pay $150 for the full size when I could get this little card for a tenth of the price? I don't know. I already have this guy. Uh, I bought this off of Amazon. And while I wasn't originally expecting it to be a cardstock piece of paper, and that did give me a little bit of disappointment, it does work the same 
may not be as accurate to a certain small percentage, but it does the job pretty well and I'm pretty happy with the output that it gives. Feel free to go check out the plugin and uh, download it if that's something that you're into. If you can find the file that they use to print this, I don't see why not because uh, it's probably good enough for some small corrections, maybe not Hollywood grade color correction, but certainly I think if you were able to print this on your own, I think you'd be able to get a decent output. So if I find an image that you can print, I'll throw it in a comment down below as well. Uh, so you can go and check out that link as well. If not, good luck finding one on your own or feel free to check the link for one in the description that you can buy. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you learned something. If you liked it, drop a like and if you loved it, drop a subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.